Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to talk about scatter plot and correlation coefficient. So those are two methods to be used to check the relationships of two numerical variables. And the scatter plot is a way to visualize the relationship, and the correlation coefficient is used to quantify the relationship. So let's start with the scatter plot using the iris dataset. First of all, I'm going to create a new R script, and then I'm going to type data iris and run that line so that the iris data can be used. And then I want to print out the variable names of this dataset in the console so that I can have the, all the variable names there ready for me to copy and paste. So the question I'm interested in knowing is that how the sample length related to the pedal length. So if I type my question here using a note, how does sample length related to pedal length. Um, I'm not sure um, biologically which variable should be the response variable, which means the y, which variable should be the independent variable or the explanatory variable. But let's use sample length as our x and pedal length as the y here. So the question we are actually checking is that how does sample length affect the pedal length? So instead of using related to, we can actually use affect because we have decided we are more interested in knowing how does sample length affect the pedal length. So first of all, the most effective way to look at this is to use a scatter plot. I'm going to use the variable from that data, so I'm going to use the dataset name dollar sign of the variable name, and then I'm use the, using the variable name dataset name again, and then sample length. So this is the scatter plot function is using the syntax y and then x. So you put response variable in the first place. And then I'm going to run the, the line and you can see exactly what you have in the scatter plot. You can actually zoom out the plot and you can see there is some um, positive relationship of these two variables and because there is an upward trend. And another way to draw the plot is to use ggplot. So what you can do is to run the library function and type ggplot2 to load the package. And then if you have never installed it, of course, you need to run install.packages and then use quotation mark of ggplot2 and to run that line. So if you have never installed it, please run install packages and to have it installed. If you have it installed, you just need to run the library function. So I'm going to use the ggplot function. I'm going to specify the dataset name, and then I'm going to assign the x variable, as we said, is sample length. x variable and then y variable. Y variable is pedal length, so I can just copy the pedal length exact variable name. And then I use plus and then G, G, G E O M point. So in that way, I'm drawing a scatter plot. And you can see the plot is printed out. Um, and it is like this. It looks more professional when you use ggplot. And of course, you can add a smoothing function to show the general trend, which is gom underline. And then you can use smooth, which is showing a smooth line. And for here, maybe you can specify the smoothing method to be lm, which means a linear regression, linear model. And you can run those three lines all together. 
and you can see there is a trend like if you are using the blue straight line to describe the pattern of these two variables it's kind of fine you do have a block a cluster of dots over under the line but the other dots are described very well especially on the up corner and that's the scatter plot so you may also wonder like some people may describe those um trend like is there a very positive correlation or is kind of a moderate correlation right so from the plot you may not be able to quantify that mirror and one thing you can do is to use a correlation coefficient so to do that you can just calculate correlation coefficient using a function called the cor which is just the first three letters of the correlation word so when you do the correlation you just need to put the two variables in like i can put it doesn't matter which variable you put as the first variable because you're just checking the correlation of two variables there is no directional thing there so you can just type petal lens and sample sepal lens and then you can run that so the syntax for correlation coefficient is just the cor x y it is the same as cor y and x so you can run this line and then you're getting a number which is 0.87 so you can see this is a very big number already and we are going to look into detail about what does this correlation number mean correlation coefficient as we just calculated using cor function is for checking the correlation of two quantitative variables and the formal name of that correlation coefficient is called pearson's correlation coefficients so it is a numerical mirror representing the strength and the direction of the linear relationship between x and y so as you can see we can we are able to describe the strength as well as the direction of the linear relationship we are not describing any curved relationship we are talking about can we use a straight line to describe the, the pattern and um, this correlation coefficient takes values between negative one and a positive one a value of zero indicates no linear association and we often denote correlation coefficient using the little r so the lower case letter r and i also have a graph here you can see um, we often use weak moderate strong to describe the strength of the linear relationship and we often use positive or negative to describe the direction of the linear relationship so if the number is up around 0 to 0.5 or 0 to negative 0.5 it is a weak correlation so there is some correlation but it is, it is not strong and if the the range is from 0.5 to 0.8 or negative 0.5 to negative 0.8 that is a mod moderate correlation and if it is greater than 0.8 or smaller than negative 0.8 we would think that is a very strong correlation so for example if you are seeing a correlation to be 0.87 that means you are having a strong positive linear correlation of the sepal length and the pedal length and if you are seeing some number to be 0.4 that means you are having a weak negative linear relationship weak and negative so you can always describe the relationship using strength and direction at the same time so these are some examples showing correlation coefficients according to the scatter plot so you can you from this graph i believe you are able to relate the scatter plot with the correlation coefficients the first one is showing a correlation to be zero 
and we are going to start from the left to the right and then go to the second row. So the first one is showing no correlation. The dots are like thrown to a mat randomly. And the second one is the correlation to be negative. First of all, it's negative. Then it is not strong. It is kind of weak. And the third one is showing a correlation. At least it, it is a positive one. And then if the, do, the dots are staying tighter to the general trend, then it is a little bit stronger than the middle one. So we are seeing R equals 0.5. And if you look at the second row, the first one is a negative correlation and the dots are much more tighter. So that correlation is a negative 0.7. And if you continue, the middle one on the second row is showing like the dots are a very tight, a very positive trend. So that correlation coefficient is 0.9. And for the last one, you're seeing the dots are even more tighter and there is a negative trend. So that correlation is negative 0.99. So you want to be careful with the positive and negative signs as well as which value it is, like which kind of range it is taking. And the last one is a quick check to help you double check if you have understand the correlation coefficient well, and if you can relate the scatter plot with the correlation coefficient. So which of these graphs showing the strongest correlation, which means the correlation coefficient closest to a positive one or a negative one. So either positively, strongly high, high, um, correlated or negatively um, strongly correlated. So the answer is B here because correlation coefficient is for describing linear association. And for graph B, all the dots are more tighter to that straight line. So for A, because it's a curved line, so you will never be able to get a correlation coefficient close to one or negative one. That's all, thank you.